All right, everybody, I am pretty sure I am getting a small cold sore on my lip. So what better reason to actually hide behind my computer screen and teach you guys how to learn DaVinci Resolve Studio from the absolute beginning. And I mean it, we're gonna assume you have absolutely no video editing experience at all. So we're gonna jump in and today what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna first set up our project. We're gonna talk about kind of the standard frame rates and resolutions that you might use. And then we're gonna learn how to actually import media into your project. And then we'll move on from there in further videos. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and move this microphone to my main desktop and let's go ahead and get started. So as video has been such a huge part of my life as of late, I can't tell you how excited I am to share with you guys my favorite video editor, which is again, DaVinci Resolve 14. And again, I have the studio version, meaning I've paid the $300 for the full license. So you might see some slight, and I mean super slight differences from if you were using the free version. But with all of that being said, as soon as you open up DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna see all of your most recent projects list it out nicely so that way you can easily access them for future work or if you're continuously working on a project and uh, that is really handy in itself now since you guys have probably never used davinci resolve before you're probably going to have all empty space and it's just going to show your untitled project now with this untitled project you have two ways of setting everything up you can either right click and you can click on project settings or you can actually double click on the untitled project and then you're going to see your user interface you're going to automatically start on your edit tab so we're going to actually not get into editing with this particular video first i want to show you guys how we can set up our project now please know that you can you can only change limited settings after you have imported media and started building a timeline. Before you actually import your footage and before you even try to start creating a clip, I highly recommend setting up your project settings, which you can find at the bottom right with this cogwheel. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you're gonna see you have your master settings. So we'll go over these lightly. You have your resolution. And again, here's me assuming you've never done anything in video before. So if you are used to setting up your project settings, you can go ahead and skip over this video as a lot of it is going to be project settings and importing your footage and organizing it. So first off, you have your resolution. So you have, of course, all these different resolutions, but most of the time, if you're gonna be posting videos to the web, you'll either want to do 1080 p or even 720p so you're going to do this 1280 by 720 which is hd it's not high high definition but 1920 by 1080 tends to be the standard now if you have a 4k camera and you're trying to actually show off the detail that that camera produces you can look at the ultra hd but again if you have the free version of davinci resolve this is going to be unavailable to you so we're going to stick to regular 1080p and uh, move on from there. So you have your pixel aspect ratio. Keep it to square because CinemaScope is for particular lenses that look like it almost stretches the image far beyond what a normal screen should look like and it helps really push that image together to make it look normal. So go ahead and leave your pixel aspect ratio to square and your timeline frame rate. Now here is where you can change this depending on your particular preference. I like to have a very cinema-esque looking um, video, so I typically use 24 frames per second or 23.976. They're obviously extremely close, um, but I always stick with 24, but some other common frame rates are 30 frames per second and sometimes even 60. So for this particular one, I wanna keep that kind of cinema frame rate going and we're gonna leave it at 24. And the playback frame rate, of course, is going to be 24 frames per second as well. And this is strictly for playback in your playback window when you are editing. So 
Moving on from there, you have video monitoring, you have your video format. Go ahead and leave most of these alone. The only thing you might want to adjust is this is purely dependent on if you're trying to create a video for the web or a video that you need as much color as possible, you can adjust your video bit depth. 10-bit obviously does more, and then you have 8-bit, so on and so forth. But we're gonna go ahead and leave that, leave the monitor scaling, and then we're gonna go ahead and click Save. Now, here we are, we have our DaVinci Resolve workspace, and you'll notice we have five tabs along the bottom. Now essentially each tab, and if you've watched my video talking about why I love DaVinci Resolve, is a particular workflow. So for instance, you have the media, which is where you import and you can browse all of your files so that way you can easily access um, all of your video files inside of DaVinci Resolve. You have your edit panel where you can actually edit and create a timeline for your video. You have your color panel, which is dedicated, of course, to specifically color. And before I forget, let's turn these on because this is what it looks like by default. And then you have an audio tab, which is brand new to DaVinci Resolve. So it doesn't have too much right now, but I can almost guarantee there's gonna be a lot in the pipeline for the future. So this is a dedicated audio tab for mixing and panning and every little bit of fine tuning you need to do to your audio. And then of course you have a deliver pay or a deliver tab, which is dedicated to exporting your actual video. So in this particular tutorial, we're gonna be sticking to the media tab, and then we'll dig into each tab in its own separate video. So that way we can dedicate the full amount of time needed to show you each of the tools available to you and how you can really set up your project and create a really good workflow for yourself. Now, with all of that being said, this is pretty simple. All you're gonna need to do is browse for your footage. So for instance, I have a storage. I have, I think it's vid12. Vid Let's click on vid12 and you'll see I have all of my footage appear here. Now what I could do, and this is a file browser if you know how to use a basic um, file finder or your file browser on a PC or Mac, uh, that's pretty much <clears throat> all this is. And then you can select your folder and you can highlight everything. And to highlight everything, I'm just holding shift. And you'll see it has a red line and I can simply drag all of this down to the media pool. But I'm gonna go ahead and undo that to show you a different way that's even easier. So if you are lazy and like me, um, it's so much easier to have the file finder open and ready to go. So all you need to do is highlight all of your footage here and simply drag it into the media pool. Now, this is extremely easy to navigate. Like you see, it's really easy to import footage. I know in Premiere Pro, it's very similar as well. And you can go ahead and scrub through some of the footage that you wanna look at. And it's really very user friendly. But the thing I like the most about it is that you can also keep your footage organized. And to do that, all you need to do is right click and then you can create add or you can add a bin. So essentially a folder and we can label this drone footage. All right, so we have our master and what we can do is go ahead and I'm gonna find all of my drone shots. Let's do this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy and I can go ahead and drag him into the drone footage bin. The rest of it is just Jennifer walking. Oops, forgot this guy as well. And this guy, man. Okay, I think we got it all. So of course you could organize it as much as you want. You could add audio, an audio folder. So we'll add another bin for audio or music, I should say. Go back to our master bin where everything is located. Now I'm gonna find the music that I have and go ahead and drop it in the music. You can also drop it on the far left here. So go to music, drop it in there. And that's pretty much it to the media tab. Now, of course, you're not gonna have too much control or even start editing in the media tab whatsoever simply because this is you getting ready and getting all of your files ready for your project. So you of course have the media storage right here. This 
tab right here will let you go ahead and toggle that window on and off. And I should have mentioned this earlier. You have your audio tab. If you want to actually preview things, you can see it's just already mixed down and mastered for the music. You have your metadata for a particular clip where you can see the bit depth, all of that. It's really cool. And then you of course have capture. You can create screen captures, but again, super simple. And now in the next video, we're going to go ahead and move into the edit tab, which is also very user friendly. So go ahead and stay tuned for the next video and we'll start learning how to edit your video and even some of the hotkeys to really facilitate a clean, smooth workflow. So go ahead, just uh, click on the next video. I'll see you guys there. Thanks a bunch.